But I'm very happy to be sitting next to International Master Eric Rosen. Eric, welcome it's to the good show. To be here. Thanks. Thanks. I for mean, having me. I think this is the first time we've ever done this together. I think so. Yeah, it feels pretty <laughs> surreal to be here. I, I feel bad kicking away Dorsa from your seat, but uh, I feel bad that you kicked away Dorsa <laughs> from your seat as well. Mm -hmm. But it's very nice to have you. Uh, obviously, you're a local, and for yeah. folks who don't know you, um, international master and. I think you do a great job with your stream. Really, a big shout out to you. Yeah, so uh, no, no, no. It's really, really good for those of you who don't know. And address our audience, if you will. Tell us what you got right about this candidates and your predictions. Oh dear, I've uh, well, I've been doing like these, uh, like the chess.com channel point predictions uh, at the start of each broadcast. I ask every day how many draws there will be. Uh -huh. And I, I usually predict like three or four draws, but there's been so many rounds with uh, three two or more decisive <laughs> games. Right. So it's it's been a thrill to watch um, right. and very difficult to predict. Um, I think in the beginning, I, I really thought Fadi would have a, uh, a good shot of coming on top. And right. okay, he was in the two um, of our top two felt, for a while. But. Felt the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Verugian mm -hmm. and uh, Christian both picked Fabi, in fact, as their uh, top picks. Mm -hmm. And only Dorsa got Nepo, but she came in a week late. <laughs> so uh, okay. it, was, it was unfair that uh, she got to pick uh, when the tournament was half uh, over. Gary Kasparov made a very salient point that he should have known that Nepo was going to be successful because of his training that he had at the World Championship match. He's carrying all of the ideas and all of the enthusiasm and the energy that he wasn't able to demonstrate in Dubai. And that, true. That, yeah. that carried him very well for this event. Did Nepo's, or, uh, Nepo's success surprise you? Um, in hindsight, I think it's less surprising, given that he's just so well prepared in the opening. And I think the change in the time format also uh, helped him a little bit, because he's one of the quicker players of, uh, of the field. Exactly. And he's putting his opponents under like serious pressure uh, right out of the opening. And there's so many games where his opponents are making of unprovoked mistakes, where uh, they, they feel the pressure on the clock and from very early in the game. So. Uh, I think it's easy to say in hindsight, but yeah, uh, yeah big kudos to him just taking a, a massive lead and looks like he's about to clinch it today. No question about it, as he plays quickly, puts pressure on his opponent. We have a colleague in mm -hmm. Madrid, Anastasia, who caught up with Magnus Carlsen. I'll get your reactions to okay. this interview. Magnus, what are your comments about this the candidates tournament and Jan's performance in particular? He's playing very well. <laughs> uh, he's uh, making the most of his, his chances. Like uh, There have been many interesting games, but he's uh, converted all of his advantages very well uh, and saved bad positions, so he's been by far the best. Yeah, I mean, did you expect it to happen? No, I didn't expect it. Uh, I thought he was um, criminally underrated by... Um, by pundits and, and betting odds, but uh, I still thought uh, that Ding and Fabiano were even bigger favorites, but kudos, he's done really well. Is it going to affect somehow your decisions to play the match or not? What do you think about we'll it see. now? We'll see. We'll see, yes, okay. Thank you very much for Thank your comments. You. Please, please. We're going to call Magnus the artful dodger <laughs> That's right. <laughs> on that one as he dodged the question. By the way, guys, sorry uh, to interrupt you, but please. speaking of this potential world championship match, it's potentially in the books. Jan Pomniachi has drawn his game against Ooh. Richard Rapport, and that is the end of the tournament. Nobody can catch Nepo officially the winner of the 2022 candidates. He got his magic number already, nine points out of 13. We'll see if he adds more tomorrow. 48,000 euros and whatever mathematical seven times whatever points he gets. We'll play for the 2023 World Championship match. We don't guarantee it's going to be against Magnus Carlsen, but we do guarantee that this man, Jan Nepomniachi, is in it. Hat tip. Uh, very, very, very deserving 
uh, Alejandro was mentioning earlier that there's actually few players, just a few players, who have uh, been back-to-back uh, candidates, winners, mm-hmm. and they include, for example, Vasily Smyslov. He he won the candidates in his first match against uh, Bad Vinnik, ended up at the tie, and then he came comes back to uh, play Bad Vinnik again and win, but then lose in a rematch. Spassky. And then uh, there was um, um, Vichy Anand. That's who, right. yeah, who did that. Uh, your quick take, it's quite an accomplishment. I'm actually wondering, is this like a record of the highest score in a candidates for a 14 round event? Nepo it, already it, only yeah. only um, Veselin Topolov, remember mm-hmm. in the, it wasn't, it was actually the world championship in San Luis, Argentina, uh, that Veselin scored six and a half mm. out of seven in the first half. And then, you know, coasted the rest away, uh-huh. drew, drew his way to the world championship uh, title. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that this is a that this is a, a really, really great score. If for he just draws a, tomorrow, a I believe it's going to be the highest for a candidates. You did mention the world championship match. R- world but championship for a candidates, t- if, he ex- if he adds that final extra point, half point, sorry, half point tomorrow. Remember, he didn't do that last time. <laughs> right, he the lost last time it back. He, he qualified. He was. <laughs> Celebrate, but <laughs> Ding Liren said, you know what, thank you for your celebration, I'll take a full point off you right. before we go back. And the question is if he's going to be able to do so tomorrow, because he is black against Duda, and if he gets that half point, is the highest ever on a 14-round double uh, round-robin tournament mm-hmm. for the candidates. But right. of course, this is a modern system, only 10 years old. Right, going back to 2013. Um, Alejandro, uh, your quick take on uh, Magnus the Artful Dodger uh, on the question of... uh, Anastasia asked about the match and he said something like, we'll see, and then run away. I think it's what's buzzing around social media. It's what's buzzing around the chess world ever since Nepo started running away with it. Why? Because specifically Magnus said, I'm not so interested in a rematch. I've already played a bunch of these guys. I'd like a new challenge. That's what he said. And a lot of people were eyeing Alireza Firuja as that potential new blood, new challenge coming into the new generation of chess players to challenge Magnus. A lot of people thought, even though Magnus is not pinpointing to anybody in the field, who could he possibly be talking about <laughs> right. when he's referring to not wanting to play the same people again? I mean, Nepo has to be high on that list and that ignites this talk that we are having right now. Eric, what is your take that you have all these contacts on social media, all of these streamers that are more aware of what's going on behind the scenes? What is your take that Team Magnus has in at the moment? Yeah, I really wish I had more inside information. Um, I... That's why we brought you on the show, by the way. <laughs> so right. we're putting you on the spot. You, you ran out of guests between Right, the exactly. We Jeffrey sure did. <laughs> Come on, in, Eric. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting to see. And uh, like, even though the the tournament is over for uh, running of first place, right? Um, there's going to be a very heated fight for for second place, uh, as we see Hikaru still playing. And I think it would be really, really cool to see Hikaru finish in second, and then it creates this dynamic where if Magnus declines to play the World Championship event, right? Then Precisely. we could see a Hikaru versus Nepo. World Championship. World Championship. Um, let's keep in mind, Hikaru is primarily focused on streamer, streaming and not uh, <laughs> competitive chess these days. So it'd exactly. be uh, super cool to see. And I think the fans would really enjoy that as well. Quick question for you, Eric. Uh, for, those of you, for those of you who aren't aware that Eric has his own stream, his own channel, it's on Twitch, yep. right? Yeah, it's I've... on YouTube. I live stream on Twitch and then post kind of the best moments from my streams on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of two different platforms that work well together. And I've I've been doing it for, uh, it's approaching the the five-year mark. Um, Five years. This fall, it'll be five years. Gosh, that goes by fast, (laughs) right? Yeah, and I I got my kind of introduction to doing online content through the St. Louis Chess Club. Right. uh, Doing like the residency position. and having the, the lectures being posted online. And um, yeah, I really enjoy the, into it, huh? the educational aspect and kind of interacting with the community. So it's it's been super fun. Eric, I think you do a great job. Thank I you. really genuinely do. 
check out I am Eric Rosen on his uh, Twitch stream. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash I am Rosen. Uh, there you yeah. go. You, you, you'll enjoy his uh, lectures, his stream very, very much. So I'd like to throw to you, Alejandro, your take on the move Knight G4 by Hikaru. Compensation for the pawn? That's what 